Welcome in, along with Mike Renner. I'm Steve Palazzolo. Today, discussing the running back draft class. Mike, we don't always put too much value on running backs, mm -hmm. but we want to break down the class and see where guys stack up. Last year, we had generational talent, Saquon Barkley. We don't necessarily have that in this class. I think it's much like the wide receiver class, wide open, but maybe not as good at the top either. Yeah, it's definitely a class where I don't foresee one going in the first round, but at the same time, I didn't see foresee Sony Michelle or uh, Rashad Penny, Sean Penny yep. going in the back end of the first round a season ago. So any of the, some of these guys I could see end up sneaking into the back end of the first round, but I do think there will be a handful drafted somewhere in the second round for sure. All right, let's discuss some of our favorite guys, starting with uh, David Montgomery from Iowa State. I think he's just a classic case where you can't look at the raw numbers mm -hmm. because so many running backs, they put up six and seven yards per carry. That's not Montgomery. He's been about four and a half yards per carry over the last two years. But when you separate him from his run blocking and what he does in the pass game, Maybe the best pure back in the class. Yeah, very reminiscent of, in my opinion, Kareem Hunt coming out. Kareem Hunt had a very bad yards per carry, but at a small school, and you think that means he's probably not going to be a great running back at the NFL level. But again, yards per carry lies at the college level because it's very scheme dependent, very run blocking dependent. Dave Montgomery has not had a great either of those, does not have a ton of room to work, but this season led the NCAA in broken tackles has been the most elusive running back over the past two years in college football. Incredible balance. Good enough athlete, he's not going to be an elite athlete, doesn't wow you in any one regard, but that balance and that breaking tackle ability is very rare. Yeah, I don't think he's got that straight line speed, but mm -hmm. again, how often is that truly a yes. major issue at the NFL level? Uh, he does have that knack for just breaking tackles and having guys bounce off of him. And again, he could do it as a receiver as well. He's forced over 170 missed tackles just as a runner over the last two years. And another guy that's right with him in forced missed tackles over 170 over the last two years is also is Devin Singletary from Florida Atlantic. He declares early after two very good years in our grading system. Yeah, small school at FAU declaring early. Don't be surprised if he ends up at the top of some team board when it's all said and done. Fantastic vision, fantastic balance. As good a break and tackle ability as David Montgomery. The only issue with me in this here, not a huge issue, but four drops on 10 catchable passes this season. That's not great. In the past two seasons, though, he only had two drops. Fantastic after the catch in that regard. Broke 10 tackles on 20 catches in the season prior, 2017. So not a huge issue. I think just a guy in space that can break tackles and take it to the house at any given time. And receiving is a tough thing to project for running backs too because yes. a lot of guys just don't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to completely ding them for the for it, but you have to also give them, uh, you know, bring that up as a question mark yeah. and you just don't know what they're going to have, what they're going to do. Um, a couple speed guys, uh, mm -hmm. Daryl Henderson from Memphis, Bryce Love from Stanford. Are these guys similar? Both of them, uh, Daryl Henderson this year and then Bryce Love last year in 2017, just ridiculous numbers very much predicated on breakaway runs and that second level burst. Yeah, you said it exactly right. Henderson this season, 70% of his yards came on runs that were 15 or more uh, yards out of the field. Bryce Love the season before, 66% of his carries, uh, or 66% of his yards, excuse me, came on big runs. So both home run threats anytime they touch the ball, but very bo both of them very much boom or bust at this point. We saw the bust with Bryce Love this year. Now injuries hampered him, but only 4.3 yards per carry. 3.5 of those did come after contact, and he still broke 41 tackles on a little over 160 carries. So still good numbers in that regard, but if the big play isn't there with both of these guys, they're not going to churn you two or three yards. They're not those kind of runners. Daryl Henderson, though, I will say, he gets up to speed quicker than any running back I saw in the nation this season. He turns it on immediately and is looking for that home run every time he gets a chance. Not saying these guys are that fast, but Chris Johnson had that type of career. Mm -hmm. He had the 2,000-yard season. He had a couple big runs, but if you, if you take out a couple of those big runs, he's yeah. less efficient. I think both Henderson and Love have a little bit of that to their game. A couple other names to keep an eye on, because there's a lot of running backs that declared early, Mike. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of guys that are going to be going Unreal. late yeah. rounds, undrafted. Uh, Elijah Holyfield from Georgia, they always have these, this loaded backfield. He was very impressive in his limited time this year, one of our highest graded running backs as well. Yeah, well, I think we saw they're declaring early because we saw a guy like Bryce Love. When you come back, it might not be Never as good. Know. When you're at the top of your game, when you're, you know, your running backs peak earlier than pretty much any other position uh, in college and in the NFL. So Elijah Holyfield, has very good between the tackles runner, very strong, very powerful, low center of gravity, averaged 4.2 yards after contact per attempt. But to me, he reminds me a little of someone like Samaj P. Ryan, where the elusiveness just isn't there. Now, he's going to fall forward consistently, but he's not going to make you miss in the hole. He's not going to be that guy at the next level. So that has its value, but I think that's limited and growing more and more limited by the day with how much space, guys that can play in space, are valuable at the NFL level. 90.1 90 .1 overall grade. 
for Holyfield running behind that Georgia offensive line. And then speaking of loaded backfields, Alabama always has top running back recruits. But Josh Jacobs, a guy that we have been calling for him to get more touches a couple right. of years ago because every time he had it, he was making guys miss. And I think he's starting to get a lot more buzz in the draft community because of his ability to run with power, which we mm -hmm. saw in the college football playoff against Oklahoma, but also with elusiveness. Yeah, Jacobs, in my opinion, one of the most complete running backs in this draft class. Now, he only averaged 5.4 yards per carry. And like I said, though, that lies. He had the highest number of carries, highest percentage of carry, excuse me, that went for a first down of touchdown of anyone in the entire nation this year. So a guy who's going to get the yardage that's needed, love his vision, like you said, complete running back. All right, well, here at PFF, the evaluations have just begun. We finished grading every single player on every play during the season, and then Mike, myself, and the rest of our team, we're going to go back and evaluate the film once again, put together the big board. So stick with us the entire draft season. There's a lot more to come when we break down these running backs, but that's just a quick snapshot at the running back draft class heading into 2019.